Hey, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a very special guest for you tonight. Listen, Sopranos. Oh, gosh, I could go on and on. De Niro, Pesci. Uh, gosh, uh, American Gangster. I could The Irishman. I could go on and on. Our friend got to meet him a few months ago at a, a friend of ours restaurant, Robert Fernero, Sopranos. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here on your show. Listen, uh, again, we uh, got to hang out a little bit a few months ago, and what a great guy. He sat down, we shot the boo-boo, talked everything from uh, politics to food to cooking yeah. to uh, movies. Chico. And, to, Chico. And Chico, Chico and Sons. Go ahead. They go, man. They got, the, they got the Eugene special there going on, man. Some That's good right. food there. Roast pork with the roasted onions, and I showed them my little dry meatball sandwich with the provolone. They like that one too, man. Delicious stuff. Listen, you got to get it. I love the, I love the onions, folks. Chico and Sons. Get get it. Get get to Eugene. So listen, Robert, real quick, man. Get, give the folks a little bit of taste of, you know, uh, of you uh, growing up and then your passion for acting. Uh, let us know a little bit about that. Where did it come from? Well, I got the bug from my from my uncle, uh, Monsignor Fanaro. He's a he's a priest and uh, he started in Howard Beach. Um, producing shows to raise money for the parish. Uh, I think it was, um, and I, I, I forget, Our Lady of Grace or something like that, or it was a, a parish in, in, in Howard Beach. And, and then he, he graduated from there. Well, graduated, he got kind of, he, as he moved on, he, he, he became a, a very big fundraiser for Catholic charities in Brooklyn. So, you know, Monsignor Fanaro, I call him Uncle Joe. Um, he's produced these musicals like Music Man, um uh hello dolly uh and you know we, my family we would go always go to his productions of course as being my uncle my father's brother it was a really big event and we look forward to it every year so uh that's how i really got the bug for acting and and then you know i have a cousin who started doing a little bit himself and we always always ham it up you know on sundays make believe we're the beatles he'd pick up his guitar and you know and so that's how i i kind of got the bug really really through him and then, of course, later on, I, I decided to pursue it seriously. And when you say seriously, you, you did it pretty seriously. Listen, going back a little bit, doing a little bit of uh, background work with our interview tonight. Uh, just gosh, I, you know, and I didn't realize one of my favorite movies, American Gangster, uh, Russell Crowe and Dan Zell. But, you know, what was it like to work on that one? Because that's one of the ones that, you know, whether it's The Irishman or, or, or Sopranos, and we're going to talk about that. But like I said, American Gangster, anytime I see that on, I stick with it, man. Tell us what it was like working with those gentlemen. Uh, well, it was really a great uh, learning curve for me, working with Ridley Scott, of course. Um, um, it was a great, uh, a great uh, thing in, 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 in my career, to, to work with uh, Russell Crowe and, and Denzel and, and of course, Josh, Josh, Brolin, Crow, right? Josh Brolin, who I, I played his partner. And um, uh, I mean, Ridley Scott, if you've seen The House of Gucci, he really put that one together really well. And all his films, Gladiator, of course, put together well. I mean, I'll tell you a little story. My first day on set, you know, I was, I was you know, Russ, I mean, uh, Josh Brolin's uh, partner in, in that and uh, McCann, I played McCann and, and, uh, they called me in a little earlier, you know, to do work. It wasn't really scheduled, but, you know, really likes to use his actors like a paintbrush, like Scorsese does. And he's doing something. So I was called in a day prior to doing it. And I remember the, the day I was called in, we had to do some sort of scene in a hospital. He wanted me there and he, uh, he, he wanted this effect of the floors being mopped. And, you know, he mopped the inner hospital floors and it was, it, it was a makeshift. It was, a, a, it was supposed to be a precinct, but they, it was a hospital. So a lot of times in films, they locations are swapped out and uh, he mopped the floors and then we did, okay, action. And with me and Josh and, and the other actors, we're gonna pick up some drugs and some money. No, actually we're picking up some drugs because we play um, dirty SIU uh, cops that, back then in the day. Um, um, and we could hardly balance ourselves on the floor. So 
you know, I mean, it was like hard to bounce on stuff. So we had to do numerous takes, and I'm saying to myself, geez, look at this Ridley Scott, you know, first day on a set with him, he's, he's, he's like he wants us to walk on water, the guy. But, you know, if anybody going to walk on water, if I'm going to walk on water for anybody, it would be for Ridley Scott. So right. I didn't complain, and, you know, I mean, and uh, but that was just a little side side note, you know. Oh, I it love good. it. It's a good film, and, and a lot of people really like it. And uh, it's one of those that that's a universal film that people relate to that that time period. And it was really well done. Uh, it's an awesome one. Like I said, it's one that always stops me in my tracks. There's only a few that do that. And yeah. then, yeah, talk to us a little bit about The Irishman. I mean, that was a, a big hit a few years ago. Uh, De Niro, Pesci, and I could go on with another uh, long list of uh, actors. Talk to us about how that was. Yeah, that was, well, I, I had worked with Martin Scorsese prior in vinyl. Uh, I played Tony Del Greco with um, with Ray Romano, Armin Garo, and and of course Bobby Cannavale, who was who was the lead in the series. So that music, whole musical thing, and and the and the, the crookedness of the, of the music world, Morris Levy, and people getting raped, uh, artists getting raped. That's what you know they tried to do with Mick Jagger. So you know once you're in Marty's family, you know chances are you're going to be used again. That's what Armin was telling me, and it came true. My dream came. You know what you for him. The Irishman, but he was in uh, um, he was in the film um, The Departed, so uh, which was Marty, and uh, so you know he always uses it. So I became part of the family, and then the Irishman was just great. I, I mean, to work with Robert De Niro that was really a, a career you know um, um, uh, milestone for me, and to sit with him and talk with him a bit about friends that I had, my mentor Richard Bright, who he knew mm. from uh, Once Upon a Time in America, and of course The Godfather, but they didn't really work in the same time period but it was great and, and also Ratanya Aldo who was in the deer hunter with him so I had something I was his friend and I had to introduce him to Skinny Razor so I struck up this relationship with him which all actors try to do if that's the case if you're a person's enemy maybe you don't want to really get too friendly with him right, you know what I mean so but I kind of broke the ice and, and I felt really comfortable with him and the scene was really it came out really well we got the last take which is the one that Marty said just do whatever you want to do and um, I added some uh, some lines. I didn't get paid like Steve Zalian, the great writer that he is. But, right. you know, it was a really great experience to be there and also to work with Delma Schoemaker, the uh, editor later on, uh, all around a, a great, a great, great experience. I wish it was more. But, uh, you know, it's it's uh, this this career is is ups as its ups and downs. Right. I mean, it's amazing to uh, when you drop off those names and then doing what you do with the Sopranos. I mean, we'll roll right into that. What was that like? I mean, I know it's all well, my questions like, what was that? But just getting that role and, and, and coming in, I think you had told me you came in sort of midstream maybe, or a couple of years yeah. in. I, and how was that, Robert? I came in, in the, in, I'm sorry, uh, I just, the, I came in, in the uh, season three. Um, how I came in, you know, Sopranos was really uh, my uh, film apprenticeship, my TV slash film, because it was shot a lot like film apprenticeship in terms of working professionally on camera. I had never done it before. Although when Jimmy, whom I did a streetcar named Desire six or seven years prior, and we did a, a Scandinavian tour, came into Caroline's because he heard from a friend that I was working there and there was a role available for me on the show. Um, we came into Caroline's, we said hello to each other, we kind of ran in into each other at Hell's Kitchen because that's where Caroline's it was is kind of located near Hell's Kitchen. He hung out there at Rudy's and so did I. And at times I would run into each other, say hello, and, and as and then of course he went to California. Anyway, he came in and I found out through my friend Gordon that I was working at from a party. He went up to him and said, Hey, if I was you, I'd get your friend Bobby Finaro a job on the Soprano. That was season three, and he actually did. He came in. And I walked in, I was managing Caroline's on Broadway at the time. And, and he asked me if I had been acting. And of course I had a lie. I said, yeah, of course, on and off I'm acting. Yeah, I'm, doing it, I'm doing it all the time, man. I'll, he said, well, I'm going to get you an audition. I can't promise you anything. And the rest is history. I stayed on the show and, and I continued on The Sopranos for another uh, uh, 2006, uh, six years, or, you know, six years because wow. in the interim, there's a, there's a break in the interim. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't shoot all year round, so. Right. Uh, and that's amazing. It's amazing, like you said, that uh, the way it, it happens, uh, Robert, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, acting school or whatnot, a lot of times it's, uh, I, I want to say it's chance or being there and being able to perform and doing the right thing. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if, if you don't, 
you know, if you don't take chances, if I never did the play with James in Europe, streetcar, I played Stanley, played Mitch, I left some sort of impression in his mind. Now, James is one of the most giving guys in the world. He kind of balanced the books for a lot of actors. He, he knew that the chances of actors getting on Sopranos was really rare if you didn't have an agent, if you didn't have that help. He understood that. He understood that struggle. So he went out of his way to cast people that he thought might be right for, for certain roles that probably didn't have representation. He might have looked and saw if I had representation, maybe saw that I didn't. So he decided, you know, well, I'm going to go to Caroline's to, to talk to him. And this is the kind of man James was. I mean, I know my really career to him, um, uh, such a giving man and, and, um, and, and his family, Deborah and Michael, who did great in the uh, Many Saints of Newark. I mean, he, he's just a wonderful man who I really, I really miss him, you know. And, and I, you know, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, Robert's a humble guy. We just got to meet each other, folks, uh, not re not too long ago, very recently. Uh, he'll be out in May at Chico and Sons again by the time this uh, interview airs. Robert, that's about all the time we got for this. But I do have a little radio show that I'd love to invite you on. And we can take the whole hour if we'd like one day if we do that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Mike Lopez and, and Caroline Carr, thank you very much for your time. And, and I really had, it was a real pleasure being on your, your show, Mike. Thank you. Robert, thank you so much. Folks, stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. <laughs> 